And welcome to Lamar University. I'm Harold Mann, along with Dave Hoffer. I'm the voice of the Lamar Cardinals. Dave, longtime voice of Lamar University Athletics. This is a really exciting day, Dave, here at the Lamar University and all across the country. National Signing Day is a day we really look forward to. They call it Christmas in February for the high school football coaches and also the college football coaches. And, of course, with a new era of Lamar football being ushered in right now with head coach Blaine Morgan, I'm sure he's hit the ground running back in December, not only to recruit players, but also to recruit his staff and his uh, coaches that we'll be visiting with throughout the morning to uh, get an update on all the signees that have committed to Lamar University football and the new era. You know, it's a little different now. I think it started last year where you have the early signing period in December, a lot of school getting a head start. But it's still, when you get to this February, the first Wednesday in February, there's still that excitement, even though it's kind of like round two. I was going to say, there was only one signee back in December, and that was a local kid, Jacobian Wilson from Beaumont United High School. And of course, he was an all-district defensive lineman. He's really, I got to see him play for the United Timberwolves on the Lamar football team. If you look at some of the, uh, the uh, players that they lost, uh, I think uh, Lamar went heavy in the offensive line, and that's always a key. And we're going to get an insight on what Lamar plans are, not only for the new offense, but the defense as well. Ought to be a lot of fun, you know, and we're going to be having uh, names we're going to be passing along, introducing you to some of these new Cardinals as, as the morning goes along. National Signing Day 2020. And, and again, we're going to see a mixture of some local kids mixed in with some kids from around the region. I was going to say one of the main concerns that Athletic Director Marco Bourne had was to uh, get a coach, Blaine Morgan, with Texas ties mm -hmm. to help in that Texas recruiting in state. But there are also sprinkled in some Louisiana guys from right across the border who are going to be looking forward to playing in the Southland Conference, trying to beat the likes of McNeese and Nichols in southeastern mm -hmm. Louisiana. I think that's great because for the longest time you would have uh, – McNeese State, Northwestern State, they're coming across the, the river into Texas and get kids. Now we're returning the favor, getting some of these good athletes out of Louisiana. And again, lots to look forward to as far as Lamar football is concerned for 2020, a new era. Hard to believe it's been 10 years since they revived the program and now the 10th anniversary. And as we said, a new beginning for Lamar football. Stick around. We'll be introducing you to the new Lamar Cardinals and the recruiting class of 2020.
That's right, yeah, it was in, back in, I think, 2016. Yep, absolutely. So talk about, uh, can you talk about offensive philosophy and uh, what, what Coach wants to do uh, along with you and, and another local coach, uh, Ronald Antoine, will be up and over the offense. Yeah, that's going to be the great thing. It's really going to be a, a big time group effort, um, with with the philosophy being we're going to be uh, we're going to be very multiple, uh, give our guys an opportunity to play fast uh, conceptually. So it's it's not too much on to find ways to, to be a little bit different than everybody else in the conference. Um, but but our offense is going to be uh, we're going to have an opportunity to stretch the field, uh, put the ball downfield, uh, and get the ball in a lot of different ways. You know, like these guys were signing, we got a lot of different guys that are just athletes in general. So find them, find them different ways uh, to get them to football, whether it's in the run game, pass game. Something I, I talked about in our first segment, how much of an opportunity do these kids have to make an immediate impact, the kids coming in this year? Yeah, well, the best guys are going to if, uh, if they're the best guy, they'll be the ones in there for sure. All right, let's talk about some of the players that have signed this morning, starting at the quarterback position, of course, most important in, in running an offense. We have Jalen Dumay from Oakland, California, is a junior college transfer and a 57% passer, over 27, well, close to 2,700 yards passing. So, uh, what do you like about Dumay? And yeah, first and foremost, uh, Jalen's just just a great guy. You know, he's always got a smile on his face. Uh, you can tell right now he's a, he's a big time competitor. Uh, it's, it's one thing for Coach Skirt and, and Coach Morgan. That's the number one thing they're always looking for. Uh, he's definitely a, a very very good athlete. So he allows you to do a lot of different things. What I'm excited the most about him is just, just as an individual, just watching him. I uh, got to see him in the rec center the other day. Uh, he, can, he can slam dunk one down. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a heck of an athlete. And, and ever since he's gotten here, uh, he's been 100% all in everything we've asked him to do. You went junior college route with him. Was that important to get a good mixture of uh, Juco kids in here? Well, yeah, I don't think we – I think because of the timing and everything, we had to go that route a little bit. Um, I think more so we want to kind of build from the, from the high school ranks up. Um, but it was a big time need. We just didn't have a lot of guys currently in the program um, that were experienced quarterbacks. All right, get the big guys up front, uh, starting with Marcus Harry from Longview, Texas, part of the state championship team. Sorry, Westbrook Bruins. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was uh, 6'3", 285, uh, big guy committed. And uh, he's a junior college guy from Tyler, so he can probably step in right away. Look at that big chain. <laughs> Marcus is a good one. He's, uh, and, and again, another great person. Always a smile on his face. Really, uh, really good athlete for an old lineman. Um, could play tackle or could even move inside later on. Um, but just, we felt that was another with all the guys that graduated for him the past year. O line was a big need. And getting a guy mid year um, and getting those two guys, especially mid year, was, was amazing that we got that done. Coach Gibson with his ties with uh, TJC and, and Longview with Coach King up there. Six three two eighty five. Do you see him getting bigger? I think so. I think he could. You know, the, the main thing for us is, is just getting as good an athlete as we can, and then with Coach Darcy's help in the weight room, putting the the right type of weight on those guys. We don't want them just to be big guys that lumber around. And they're right here on campus now, and they'll be part of spring training, so that's going to be uh, so important too. How about Jacob Lokenville from uh, Van Alstine, Texas, a three hundred pounder, six four, but coming out of high school, he's got. Uh, Build on that. Yeah, Big Jake. He's a he, he's a blue collar guy. That's what I love about him. Um, he loves the contact of the game, and uh, you know he comes from a, a family. His dad's a, is, a, is a high school coach, and uh, he's been doing it a long time. Um, but he's he's the he's the, the grinder, the blue collar guy that could play tackle, could play inside. Really smart guy too, um, and just really just really excited about Jake and everything. We do see quite a few offensive linemen. Is, uh, did you, is that where you looked, or you just come in here and look at everything right away? Well, we, we, the first thing we did was really kind of assess what we currently had, returning, how much experience they had, what we thought you know their talent level was, and, and that's hard to do coming in. But we did that quickly, and we saw that just number-wise, um, didn't have a ton of linemen on scholarship, uh, and so we felt like we had to have a big class of guys we could, we could, you know, high school guys that we could develop. Over time, um, that you hope by like their, you know, their at least their second year in the program, they're contributing a little bit. 
Talk about uh, some of the, uh, well, I might skip ahead and uh, talk about some of the tight ends that you've signed to. I noticed there's a, a couple on there, starting with Devin Gibbs uh, from Maybank, Texas. Yeah, so Devin, Devin's one of those guys that he's played like every spot on the field. Um, a tall, long, rangy guy. He's played wide out for him, um, split out there. And they, they do, they, you know, they run the ball in their offense in high school at a high level. Um, so he's one of those guys you could split out and put him in the slot. Um, you could put him out as a single X receiver and, and throw a jump ball to him. Uh, it creates a big time mismatch out there. And he's not afraid to stick his nose in there with the length and the strength he's got um, in, the, in the run game, which is going to be a big part of what we do, what we ask those guys. So you look very versatile when you look for a tight end, like you just explained. You've you got to do a little bit of everything in the tight end. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They've got to be able to uh, show that they're going to be physical and be, be an extension of the O line, but be dynamic enough to, again, like we talked about, uh, be like a wide receiver in space. Um, and, and, and start block on the perimeter, but also go win a one-on-one -on -one matchup um, down the field. Final comments, and everybody gets excited about the uh, skill positions. I understand there's a running back from East Texas Bush that you uh, just signed this morning. I mean, it's within the last 15 yeah. minutes, and uh, he's got to be excited. Yeah, we got two really good ones, and they're kind of they're they're kind of like I don't know, you know, thunder and lightning. They're kind of two different guys. Uh, Bush is is the guy that he can take it the distance, but he's going to pound it up in there and and make some guys miss inside. He's got really good feet, real low center gravity. Um, and then Jalen's that guy, he just, he gets the ball on the edge. You, you know, I think he's a 10-6 guy in 100 meter. But he's also not just a straight line guy. He's got some wiggle too. And, and again, both great guys, you know, got a smile on their face the whole weekend they were down here and uh, fun to be around. You know, you talk about Daryl Bush. He's out of Gilmer High School. They won state championships. They go deep into playoffs every year. Coming out of a winning program, that's really got to be an asset. It is. I think so. I mean, because they, they've been around it. They know the culture of what it takes to, you know, it's hard to win, a, you know, a high school, any, any kind of championship. Um, so those guys have been a part of it. I think it just helps you bring more of that into the team. And you see a lot Look of that. Look at that breakaway speed. <laughs> you got to like that. Yeah. Hit the hole. Yeah, he exploded through that hole. All right, Patrick. Once again, congratulations. Great signing class, offense, and uh, Looking forward to that uh, spring practice and uh, the season ahead. Absolutely. Thank Not that you. Far away. Welcome to Beaumont and uh, looking forward to the 2020 season. All right. Thank you. It is National Signing Day. We're here at Lamar University at the Dolphin Athletic Complex. Stick around. We'll introduce you to more coaches and we'll also introduce you to new future Cardinals.
Athletic Complex uh, talking 2020. It is National Signing Day. Dave Nile, time say, to talk exciting defense. time of the year. We saw in the uh, commercial break, Lamar softball starts up this mm -hmm. week, baseball next week, basketball tonight here at the Montaigne Center on campus. And uh, if you're going to make it after the game, why not come out early? You can meet the new head coach, Blaine Morgan, and his staff, as they'll also be talking and running down the recruiting list. That starts at 5.30 at the Cardinal Club Room again tonight at the Montaigne Center prior to the basketball game against Central Arkansas. It tips off at 7 o'clock, so uh, as you said, exciting times for Lamar, Lamar Athletics as we welcome in a new coach. Matt Weiker, uh, <laughs> welcome to Beaumont. Uh, before we get started, tell us about your background a little bit. Uh, originally from Ohio. I grew up in a small town in Ohio, played at Ohio University, um, GA at Wake Forest. Uh, went out to the Air Force Academy for uh, it was about 12 years, and that's where I had a chance to work with Coach Morgan uh, there at the Academy, and then, and then spent the last season at Vanderbilt. And happy to be here in Beaumont, Texas. So you Blaine Morgan, uh, excuse me, yeah. Blaine Morgan, uh, uh, an Air Force guy himself, like yes, like you, you coach there. What's the Air yes, Force sir. way of playing football? What's the mentality? Oh, geez, I think that, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just discipline. You know, discipline individuals that uh, that uh, have high character and, and, and individuals that are reliable, dependable, and that's that's kind of the Air Force way, and that's how they win a lot of football games out there, playing with those type of kids. Kind of coattail that. What I was going to say, you're familiar with uh, Coach Morgan. How yes, important sir. is that for coaches to be familiar with one another? It's got to make that process a lot easier. Yeah, I think anytime you know you know how, how an individual is going to operate and, and, and what's he's all, what he's all about and uh, in the recruiting process and the coaching process, his coaching style, you know, I think you want to try to align yourself with somebody that you feel the same way about the, about those things. And, and really, I think Coach Morgan is is, is definitely, uh, definitely a guy that I feel like I'm in line with as far as what he believes in Talk about going out and get those kids. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I haven't had a chance to go out there. Uh, you know, I'm new to the mm -hmm. program. And, and I've only been here a week. That's yeah. right. And, and, and the guys that were on staff, you know, kind of, I came in and they had a board set up. And, and we went through and watched, uh, geez, hours and hours of film uh, on these recruits. But they did a tremendous job of, of, of getting that board b built and then making decisions on as far as who we're going to offer. So let's start uh, you taking a look at some of the yeah. players that uh, Lamar has signed this morning. And the, these are official names that came in starting at 7 o'clock this morning. Uh, yeah. Let's start with uh, Kanan Lane, uh, linebacker, six foot 235 out of Waxahachie, Texas. Uh, in on a lot of tackles at linebacker, and that's got to be important. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you know, really impressed with this young man. I mean, uh, as far as inside linebackers go, he's just uh, he's a load. Uh, he's a guy that when he makes contact, he's not going to go backwards. Uh, does a good job of running sideline to sideline. You can see some acceleration on the field, and uh, and when when he does make tackles, he's a guy that's going to run through that tackle and and, and really uh, kind of make that ball carrier feel his presence there. Uh, also, an individual as you see here on film that's that, that shows the ability to play in space too. Uh, very productive in, individual. Um, great family when they came on their official visit. Uh, just a tremendous family. Had a lot of guidance, a lot of direction from his parents. And we're really lucky, lucky to have this young man. I could see him stepping in early and helping out this program early. He attacks 13 sacks as a senior. And I, I mean, there's some kids that go through an entire high school career and don't get 13. He had 13 in one year. Yeah, like I said, very productive individual and just a, a, an individual, you know, I think obviously going to play in the box for us, but uh, wouldn't be afraid to put him on the edge and have him be a presence off the edge as far as a uh, third down situation goes with, with putting pressure on that quarterback. How would you describe your defensive philosophy? Is it going to be an attacking style defense? Yeah, we're going to attack. You know, and I think, I think the biggest thing for me, the thing that I've learned is, is just being uh, making sure that these kids have rules. And I think where we're going to start is, is being a, um, a defense that uh, prides himself on stopping the run and trying to make mm -hmm. that offense one-dimensional. One dimensional. That's where I think we're going to start with this defense. Get him in the weight room as quick as we can. As quick as we possibly can. <laughs> Let Coach Darcy take care of him. <laughs> All right. How about another name uh, signee this morning? Uh, how about Chadera Ume, defensive end from Richmond, Texas? Yeah, I'll tell you, you see this, High School. Yes, sir. You see this young man walk in the door, and you'll be really impressed with the way that he looks. Uh, again, another individual, just a great young man. Uh, him and his mother came on the official visit. Really good people. Uh, excited to have him just with his personality alone. Uh, but again, you see on film, uh, big frame, length is what we're looking for, plays well with his hands, he's explosive off the ball, very productive kid. I think he's a young man that really has the ability to play, you know, a three technique, a two eye, a four eye, a five. He can kind of slide around on that defensive front and uh, definitely somebody that, uh, again, I feel like could come in and help us early. 
a region kid, you know, out of Richmond yes, in the Houston area. Yeah. And, and that's going to be exciting, not only for him, but for his family, because they can see him play on Saturdays. That's right. You know, no, I think it's an hour and a half drive, very short drive for, for uh, his family to come over and watch him. And, and that's one thing I think Coach Morgan and the staff has kind of put the focus on as far as, uh, you know, getting some local kids, some really good local high school football players that are going to come in and help build this foundation. Another linebacker is Kendall Rowan from Marrero, Louisiana, St. Augustine High School, second team all district. Yeah, you watch this kid on film, and I think the one thing that stands out with him is just his his presence off the edge. I mean, he is a, he's an individual that had a, I think it was about a, uh, I want to say maybe a, a, a 6'10 wingspan. I mean, just really, really long length and explosive off the ball. And a guy, when we get in third down situations, he's definitely going to be a factor off the edge as far as, putting pressure on that quarterback and making that quarterback throw that football. Uh, another young man that uh, when he came on his official visit, it was him, his mom, and his brother, just great people to be around, really good personality, kind of a quiet kid. Uh, but when he did come out of his shell, you could just tell that he was a good young man and somebody you wanted to have in your program. Good athlete. Played two sports in high school, played yes. basketball as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I haven't seen any basketball clips on him. But I, I would say with those long arms, he probably doesn't have any problem throwing the ball down, that's for sure. But we're really excited to have this young man. Like I said, you know, another one that I think brings, uh, brings a lot of ability to the football field, and I could see him helping us out early as well. Another uh, linebacker is from the uh, Longview area, Vincent Rockwell, mm -hmm. played at Spring Hill High School. Uh, talk about Vincent and uh, – are you going to be 3-4, three, 4-3 four, four, three defense? I know there's a number of Yeah, you know, we'll be playing. multiple, and really what we try to do is just come in here and, and look at our, our personnel that we have in the program now and try to try to slide those guys into to, to where we feel like they would fit and try to mold our scheme around the guys that are in the, in the program already. Um, you know, Vincent, I mean, just a load. I think he's weighing probably somewhere around 235, somewhere in that area. And you watch his film, he's playing multiple positions, plays inside, plays outside, puts his hand down in the dirt as well. Just a very versatile player for us, uh, very productive. And another one, you know, when you watch the linebacker position, really you're looking for guys that they can see it in the box, how well they play in space. And the other thing, too, when they're making contact, you want to make sure that they're not going backwards, right? <laughs> they're making the ball carry go the opposite direction. And that's one thing that we saw uh, with him on film. You talked to him about being 235 with a linebacker, good size. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see him get more weight on him? But what, where do you like to see the range maybe on a linebacker? I'll tell you really where he's at right now is, is, is proud. he's in pretty good shape. I, I think a little bit too probably needs, needs to get with Coach Darcy and try to uh, slim down a little bit and put on good weight. And that, that's obviously something that Coach Darcy is going to do a good job at. But I think where he's at weight-wise, weight -wise, I kind of see him being in that uh, Another linebacker that uh, I believe is probably already on campus because he's a junior college transfer from Cisco College in California from Lubbock, Seth Wood, uh, mm -hmm. to your letterman. And, uh, Seth is going to make an impact. He'll be part of spring training. Yeah, I hope so. You know, I'm looking forward to having him go through spring ball with us. Uh, you know, since I've had a chance to, to, to visit with him a little bit, uh, seems like an individual that's going to ask or going to do anything you ask of him. A uh, really hard worker in the weight room. Uh, and I've already started to see some glimpses with him as far as uh, taking on that leadership role a little bit, which is good to see, especially coming with somebody coming into the program that's brand new. Uh, but when you watch his film, another guy, I think he's around the 230 range. But when he makes contact, you know, he's not going backwards and does a really nice job of seeing the plays in the box as far as gap scheme, gap scheme, gap scheme stuff goes. And, and just a guy, I think, that is, is going to have a shot to be an impact player for us. And uh, we'll see how he does throughout spring ball. We talked about this on the offensive side about getting JUCO kids in. Mm -hmm. Is that important right now with the number of kids that may have left in, uh, for graduation to get some kids in that have that college experience? Uh, you, you know, I think in, in certain positions it probably is, just, just looking at our depth. But I think where we want to focus on is just getting good uh, local high school football players uh, that are going to come in and, and kind of build a foundation for, for where we want to take the program. How about defensive backs? Uh, Jacob Fex out of McKinney, Texas, one of the signees this morning. Yes, sir. Uh, last year, Lamar had problems defending the pass on occasion. And uh, yeah. again, uh, what, what are you looking for in that? Well, I th the one thing that impressed me with Jake is, is really just his knowledge of the game. When, I, when he was on his official visit and I had a chance to, to talk football with him, I mean, he was, he was spitting out the answers. Um, so you can tell he's really savvy when it comes to um, just the game of football, uh, knowing where he's supposed to line up, knowing his responsibility. I think that's the one thing that struck me um, when he came on his official visit. Um, you know, son of a, of a high school football coach, 
uh, really knowledgeable with with the game and a versatile kid too. When you watch Plays him, he's playing yeah. Yeah, <laughs> wide receiver, and then you know I think he's a rangy kid on the back half. He'll be able to play the post for us. He'll be be able to play the the half field safety for us. And then the other thing too, when you see on film, I'm not afraid of him being a run fitter as well. I think he's got a, a, a he's an individual that has a knack for the ball, and he's not afraid to come down and put his face on the ball carrier. At least the second kid we've heard you talk about being a coach's kid. Does that help? Because obviously they yeah. grew up around it. Yeah, you know, obviously just just being able to ha have a knowledge of the game. And I think the biggest thing is communicating, you know, communicating with other individuals on the field, getting everybody lined up. And I feel like Jake is going to bring that to, to, our, uh, to our scheme, to our defense. Defensive coordinator Matt Weicker with us this morning, a recruiting roundup and uh, some great insights on the future Cardinals we can look forward to in 2020 in the fall campaign. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Coach. We're looking forward to the upcoming season. Likewise. Again, it is recruiting day, signing day, rather here at the Dolphin Athletic Complex. More of the new Lamar Cardinals coming up here from the Dolphin Campus on Lamar University. I'm Harold Mann along with Dave Hofferth. We're here at the Dolphin Athletic Complex. It's uh, signing day 2020. We're now joined by head coach Blaine Morgan. And, Coach, uh, I know since you came in here on that Friday, uh -huh. 
back in December, you've been looking forward to this day. It's an awesome day. I mean, it's like uh, it's like Christmas morning. You wake up and you know you're just waiting for 7 a.m. and uh, you start to get those the the letters of intent coming in. It just it's a it's an exciting. Uh, there's there's been a certainly a journey this last month. Um, and it's uh, it, a little bit of fulfillment, but really it's just the start of, of what's to come. I was going to say, it's so many things on your plate when you first got the job, and you had to recruit some good coaches to help you in recruiting players. Uh, t- we just met Patrick Covington yeah. along with Matt Weicker, defensive coordinator. Right. Covington with the offense. Uh, just talk about that process and then identifying uh, guys you need to work with that are going to you know, trust you and you trust them. I think, I think the first thing to mention is just the staff. And, and what a tremendous job they've done of uh, just or organizing and organizing the recruiting process. There's there's a lot and, and a lot behind the scenes that people don't realize that goes into this whole process of even getting a list to even start evaluating. And uh, with with that, our recruiting coordinator Kobe Gibson has done a tremendous job. I mean, he is he's meticulous as far as attention to detail if you look at our recruiting trip our, our recruiting weekends and how what the job they've done just getting things organized and and really having an itinerary ready to, to really showcase a Lamar University um, that I think has been tremendous um, and then you go into the hiring process of, of evaluating who you're going to hire get on your staff and and I think the number one thing is you want you want a staff that is aligned with kind of your values and your thoughts and how you want to move the program forward. And I think uh, I think we've done a nice job of, of, of evaluating those coaches. And, and I think these this coaching staff is really all in on h- how we want to do things and, and moving forward. Um, and really, they're gonna they're gonna do a tremendous job of helping me more than anything else. As a head coach, I think you need to hire incredible coaches that can tell me what to do, you know, and help me, right. help help show me, um, you know, with, with this entire process. Because it's certainly not about one person at all. It's about uh, all of us coming together as, as, a, as a group and a staff. With getting in here late, the early signing period really not there, uh, with the exception of the one signing, I imagine there's been a lot of long days, long hours uh, to get to today. I, I, yeah, I don't think it, it's it's impossible for anyone to really understand what what's gone into this to get us to this moment. A um, lot of long, a lot of long evenings, a lot of travel back and forth, um, just from city to city, hotel to hotel room, and then uh, just communication. That just time on the phone and in person with these recruits, with their parents, and really. I think the number one thing is, is these high school coaches. They need to understand that that's what we're going to do is we're going to go through them. And we really trust being the son of a high, Texas high school football coach myself. We're going to trust these high school coaches. And, and really, we've leaned heavily on these guys, uh, the coaches, and their opinions on these kids um, to really get, get a, you know in-depth evaluation of these guys. Well, we want to meet some of them? Mm-hmm. Oh, no doubt about that. Let's start off with an athlete we haven't talked about yet. Carson Harris uh, from Carrollton, Texas, Everton High School, uh, dual threat quarterback, another quarterback in the fold. Yeah, Carson Harris from my hometown. I mean, his high school is where I would have gone to high school had not had I not gone to Trinity Christian. So uh, it's a coach, uh, Brian Brazel, that I've known for a long time. He's been coaching for 30 years and Time and time again, you're going to talk about walking into a high school and these coaches saying, this is one of the best kids I've had, as not only as a kid, but as a competitor. And I think those are the things we've leaned on with this class. I mean, he's multifaceted. He played quarterback. You'll see him at receiver here in a couple clips. And he, it, he just loves football. I mean, he's a kid that loves ball, um, that loves to compete. Um, and, and when you go into – you know, you talk to the, his high school coach, he's like, you've got to have this kid on your team. I mean, he is a foundation kid. He's a kid that, you know, that you want to build a foundation and, and, and build a program with. Um, he's one of those guys. He can play quarterback and be a Wildcat quarterback. Uh, you know, he's, he's very versatile in, in the different positions that he could slide into and play. That's why I love, I love quarterbacks. They're the you know, leader, leaders on the team. I mean, they're the team captain. They know what's going on, and, and they're the guys everyone looks to. Moving on long, and I'm not even going to try the last name here, <laughs> Ifuso 
Uh, he's a 6'1 linebacker at Leesville High School in Leesville, Leesville, Louisiana. Yeah, you, you talk about the area. Um, you know, his, both of his parents are, are in the Army, and so you talk about an incredible family structure. I mean, the kid, uh, the kid came in, and I mean, he's, he's just an impressive just person to visit with and an impressive family. And then you turn on the tape, and you're like, wow. This kid's this kid's got a tr tremendous speed. I mean, he's very explosive. Look at him run to the football right there. Um, he's a guy that I think has a lot left in the tank as far as you know. Everybody uses the catchphrase upside, but he's he's got a lot of potential there um, to only build from from where he where he is in high school. And I think that's what you're going to see in this class is a group of guys that you see that are explosive, but at the same time they've got plenty of potential to grow and become. Uh, Become great, great football players. Four, three, seven, forty. Wow. <laughs> you're going to see, and again, you saw it with Coach Weicker. You're going to see speed in this class. You're going to see length. You know, uh, as far as outside backers and offensive, defensive linemen, um, that's kind of what we're looking for. So body types, length, and athleticism. We talked about Daryl Bush, a running back earlier from Gilmer, Texas. Another running back that uh, Coach Covington didn't get to talk that much about is Jalen Jackson. From Burleson, Texas, Centennial High School, three-star prospect, and uh, once again ranked among the top 30 all-purpose backs in the country. And uh, he was a co-offensive player of the year in his uh, division, Class 5A. Yeah, this guy's lightning in a bottle. I mean, you look at him, he's not very big, but uh, again, another high school coach I've known for a long time, and a guy that when you go into the high school, you, you ask him, he said, he's one of the one of my most favorite players I've ever had coaching football the last 20 years. And look at him. I mean, I think he's like a 10, 10 600 meter dash kid, so he is explosive. But if you get him in space, he, he can make a guy miss in space. And then you get around him as a person, just personality wise, he's, he's fun to be around. I mean, he's an incredible leader. Um, and, and that comes directly from his high school coach, who I've known for a long time and, and, and have a great trust. And uh, gosh, you, we're, we're going to enjoy getting the football and finding ways to get him the football in space. I was going to say, catching the ball out of the backfield. Right. You got to like that. I mean, today's football, when you watch even the NFL and the Super Bowl and what Patrick Mahomes and all those guys were able to do, uh, Lamar Jackson with uh, Baltimore, and you, know, you talked about the quarterbacks, um, but uh, a lot of the running backs in the NFL nowadays uh, have to catch the football coming out of the backfield. Is that what you're uh, looking for from your players? I, I think you want a variety of backs. So you want, want a guy you can hand it to to make – you know, those hard yards, which, you know, I think we, we signed one of those guys. And then you want the guys that you can hand it to that can, you know, that can make us better coaches because in one play at any given time, they can take it to the house. So I, I've learned, you know, ha, ha, being, being on teams with guys like Rashad Penny at San Diego State, that you got those explosive guys, then, you know, those guys make us better coaches when you can hand it to them and they're, they're gone. Last couple of kids you've talked about, you said you know their high school coaches. Does that help you out a lot when you go in and you look that coach in the eye and he tells you what kind of quality of kid you're going to be getting? Absolutely. I mean, I think the high school coach is really, you know, the key to the whole deal because we want to recruit kids with high character. I mean, that's going to be, to me, that's the key component. You turn on the tape and they've got to be able to play. They've got to be able to help you, you know, because ultimately that's what you're judged by. But then you go in and you get on the phone with the high school coach and you ask, okay, what kind of what kind of kid is he? What kind of character does he have? What kind of work ethic does he have? How much does he love football? You know, you ask him those things, and if any of those come up, you know, negative, then you're moving on to the next guy. Does that give you a chance to get maybe? And I don't want to use the word hidden jewel, but there's some kids out there, other schools may overlook that you know their coach and they're telling you what you're going to get. Does that help? No, I I think what you've got to do is you've got to trust your own process. Right. And we're not going off what anybody else and what offers the kid has. We're going to trust when we turn on the tape that we trust our own eyes and our, our own evaluation. And, uh, and, and that's what you've got to lean on. You've got to trust yourself that, you, you know, that your evaluation process is thorough um, and, and you trust those coaches and what they're saying. And then at the end of the day, you've, you've got to, they, they've got to help you, uh, you know, turning that into some wins on the football field. I was going to say, when you talk about a high character kid, then you don't have to worry about him in the classroom, too, right? Well, there's, there's, I, I think there's certainly carryover. When, when we go into a high school and we see his transcript, and he's a 3-0 plus, so he's worked hard in the classroom. I think, you know, what I've learned throughout my years of coaching is that there is carryover, you know, that, that comes into the weight room. If he's worked hard in the classroom, then he knows how to work. He's, when he comes to the offseason, he's going to work his tail off 
you know, getting into the weight room and really having, having, you know, the leadership part of it too, all that kind of goes together. There's another player we haven't talked about, and it's a defensive player that uh, just came in, Tylo Phillips, defensive end from Collinsville, Mississippi, and uh, he's a junior college guy, so you're expecting stuff from there. How much are you going to work with the defense? Because uh, you're an offensive guy, mm -hmm. offensive coordinator at San Diego State. You're just going to turn it over to Matt and let him uh, take care of that side of the ball, or? I, how does that how does how yeah, does that dynamic work? I think you hire guys and then you have to trust them. You have to trust. I, I've worked with Matt for a number of years and I, I fully trust his uh, capability to you know to be a defensive coordinator and to run the defense. I mean, I trust him completely. Now there will be some back and forth as far as you know some thoughts that I'm that I may have, but you know I'm going to hire him and and we're going to hire the rest of our staff and and he's going to have autonomy of the defense. And, you know, freedom to, to do what he feels uh, fits our personnel best, like he talked about. So can you talk about Tylo in here? Yeah, Tylo. Tylo's a guy, you know, you, you meet him in person, and you're like, man, you know, frame-wise, he's, you know, he, he's an impressive-looking person. You know, he's a guy coming from you know, junior college in Mississippi that, you know, where he was very productive. And so, you know, when you look at his tape, we're not, it's not, not playing right now, but he's a guy that, can play a number of positions. He can fit in there inside. He can also probably go outside, inside out. And then he's explosive off the ball. You know, he's a physical football player. And then we just need to form his body, you know, in this off-season program. And just from a work ethic standpoint, just continue to bring him along in that regard. You've been through this as an assistant coach at Air Force and at San Diego State. Now your first time as a head coach. How nerve-wracking is today for you? <laughs> Waiting for those names to come in. Um, I think you have a pretty good idea this morning, you know, when you, it, it's more of a kind of a relief that, okay, they're signed, you know, once they sign then other schools, uh, it's amazing. You know, we've, we've been here, um, for about four weeks, maybe a little over and, uh, that other schools want to come and, you know, you've only had four weeks. Other people have had, you know, 12 to 24 months to recruit and yet they still want to come in and try to try to steal your guys at the last <laughs> at the last minute. It's it's funny how that that happens. Um, and, and you go in and you trust your process, and other people start trusting your process as well. So um, it's interesting how that happens. Once again, we're visiting with new Lamar football coach Blaine Morgan here on Facebook Live, and Coach Morgan is going to have another press conference coming up at 12 noon today. So if you missed some of his commentary, you're just joining. What to look mm -hmm. forward to. And how hard did you have to recruit the current players to keep them from transferring? Uh, you know, I think uh, I, there were a couple phone conversations. I tried to call, I tried to call or communicate with every single person on the team within the first week I was hired, um, and so I think that communication was certainly appreciated by the current team. There were a couple guys that that thought maybe they wanted to transfer, and then you know, visiting with them and kind of trying to you know communicate the vision of, of what we want to be with our football program I think it really excited them um, so I think we have a, a team that is excited about uh, the vision for, for what we're going to do and the direction we're going as a program and I think you've got a group that you know in the first week and a half they they're starting to understand uh, what accountability what accountability means um, and work what, what, what hard work means and uh, that that's a process so so going from you know an old way of doing things and, and trying to get into a new way of doing things I, th I, th I think there's a transition involved as far as your mindset and uh, just overall what you're doing on a daily basis how much are you going to rely on the current players to welcome in the new guys um, we, we already have you know so our current players we've trusted we've trusted those guys on, on the weekends where we've had our, our recruits and I think they've done a tremendous job just Really being honest, that, 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 that's, the, you know, that's the key with, with what we're going to do and how we're going to recruit. We're going to be, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be up front with these guys and, and tell them exactly how, how it's going to be here. Um, I think when you bring kids in on a visit, I think you want to show them exactly what the university looks like and, and give them a realistic look at what life will be like when they get here. Um, Coach, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the, the list of Just names that are coming in, <laughs> and it's a new chapter for Lamar University football. Yeah, we're, we're excited. We're, we're already going, but we're excited to, uh, you know, to 
get this. This is a this is another step along the way. Can you talk about the spring game? Is it going to be open to the public? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah, there, uh, yeah. Our, our our practices now are going to be open to the public, and I think that ho hopefully something new that is uh, that's welcome um, now. My, we might make guys, you know, sign in and tell us where they went to school, so we don't. <laughs> yeah. guys from, 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 you know, the local schools, but no, we're going to welcome. We're going. We're going to welcome the local community. We'll, we'll certainly have spring. We'll have some scrimmages on Saturdays that we've already set up. We're going to have a kids. We're going to have a kids camp after one of our Saturday practices that I think all the, you know, the Golden Triangle. They love to bring their kids out and get coached by our players. Um, our spring game is going to we'll, we'll, we'll have a pretty festive spring game where we have some things for, for kids and you know the local we'll have a local coaches uh, clinic that I think we're going to put on and then certainly invite all our letter lettermen you know our past lettermen will Harold Mann along with Dave Hopperth and Dave, this has just been a, a great morning here at Lamar University, getting a chance to uh, meet the coaches, getting a chance to learn about the new kids coming in. As we said off the top, new beginning for Lamar football with a new staff coming in and uh, exciting times for Blaine Morgan as he uh, goes ahead and looks forward to uh, his spring practice as he just talked about. It's going to be open to the public. And if you missed any of the uh, announcements of the names this morning, it's always available on LamarCardinals.com. James Dixon and the staff do an outstanding job of not only providing information about the players, little bios, uh, there's been some video. And uh, once again, you can uh, keep up to date with LamarCardinals.com. Follow Lamar Football on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, as the signings come in, they'll be tweeted out as well. And there's another player that just uh, has made it official with uh, signing for Lamar. Yeah, we're talking about Jacoby Carter, defensive back, 5'11", 180-pounder, out of Homa, Louisiana. I just like saying the name of his high school, Terrebonne High School. <laughs> in Homa. Yeah, in Homa, Louisiana. <laughs> A lot of people say Homa, yeah. but it's uh, Homa, and of course, that's Nichols yeah, country. That's, that's, uh, so they snatched him right out of uh, Nichols State country. You know, and it's good. You know, like I said, uh, as we said earlier in the program, uh, for so many years, uh, those uh, Louisiana schools would jump over here to Southeast Texas, East Texas, to get some of the players. Now we're seeing more on that. And Jacoby, a defensive back, there you see. Making an interception. You know, uh, going six. for a pick six <laughs> there. Uh, you know, recover, he, he returned a pass for a touchdown. We just saw that. Recovered three fumbles, named uh, the athlete of the week in, in a game. So really excited to see him in the red and white. No doubt about that. And uh, once again, as uh, the coaches pointed out this morning, they're looking for speed, speed, and attacking defense. And uh, that's what it looks like we're going to get with Jacoby. And, again, you talked about Twitter, and uh, Coach Morgan was talking about the, the spring dates, the scrimmages, kids' day, coaches' clinic. Uh, you could go to the Lamar Twitter and check it out, Facebook. I'm sure they'll have those days posted as soon as they become available. It's going to be an exciting spring, as we said, uh, an exciting time for Lamar Athletics with uh, softball starting this week, baseball, and, of course, basketball tonight at the Montaigne Center against Central Arkansas. The uh, women's team will be back home on Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Right, and the women are up in Conway tonight uh, for a game against Central Arkansas. And as you mentioned, Abilene Christian coming to town. This is a fun time at Lamar University Athletics because 
Softball's ready to start. Baseball starts on the 14th. The women and men's basketball. And here we are talking football. <laughs> so, again, in a little more than an hour, Coach Morgan will have his press conference uh, talking more recruiting with Lamar football. That'll be at 12 noon Central Time today. And then uh, football tonight, 5.30 meet and greet with uh, Lamar fans at the Cardinal Club Room at the Montaigne Center, followed by basketball with Harold Mann on KLVI. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. But uh, if you, you, you can listen to the game if you can't get out there. We'd love to see at the Montaigne Center uh, the guys coming off that big win over McNeese State on a Saturday where McNeese State had won seven games wow. in a row. <laughs> they claimed they were going to sell that place out, 4,700 tickets, maybe a little over half full, but still those in the blue and gold left disappointed. <laughs> You've been around a long night, have Dave, with that rivalry. With McNeese State, always nice to beat McNeese State in any sport. I'm sure it was special for head coach Dick Price. And, of course, there's a rematch for the Battle of the Border coming up. Last game of the regular season at home on March the 7th. So we'll look forward to that. And it will be a doubleheader with the women uh, starting at 2. Uh, once again, uh, basketball right in crunch time as far as uh, Southland Conference race. You know, and back to the football recruiting. It's been a fun day here. Dave, thank you so much. All right. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having me back. All right. Again. National Signing Day coming up at noon. Coach meets with the press. We're at Lamar University at the Dolphin Athletic Complex.